Greetings to everyone at the World Preservation Foundation. Thank you so much for uh, having me, and I apologize for not being able to be there in person. According to the Director General of the World Health Organization, the three greatest threats facing humanity are the global food crisis, climate change, and pandemic influenza. Why is there so much concern about the so-called swine flu? Because apparently the last time an entirely new flu virus jump species and triggered a pandemic, it went on to become the deadliest plague in human history, the uh, influenza pandemic of 1918. Now, most flu strains tend to spare young, healthy adults, but the 1918 virus killed people in the prime of life. In 1918, more than a quarter of all people fell ill. In 1918, between 50 to 100 million people lost their lives. A similar uh, pandemic today could kill many more. What started for millions around the globe as muscle aches and a fever ended days or even hours later with many people bleeding from their eyes, nose, mouth, ears. Homeless orphans, their parents dead, wandered the empty streets. Well, the conventional wisdom is that the 1918 pandemic was triggered when an H1N1 bird virus in its entirety, all eight gene segments, jumped into human beings. We then apparently passed it along to pigs, sickening millions of them as well. After the pandemic, after our human immune systems became used to the new virus, it turned into the regular seasonal flu, and in pigs it turned into what's called classic or classical swine flu. Uh, before 1918, there were no reports of pigs getting the flu at all. People got the regular flu every year, and pigs got swine flu, same with the 30s, and same with the 40s. But swine flu was stable throughout. But by 1999, everything change. A never-before-described triple species reassortment flu virus arose. The classical swine flu virus, after being stable for 80 years straight, picked up three gene segments from a circulating human flu virus and then two gene segments from a bird flu virus to create the first triple animal reassortment flu virus ever described. Our first hybrid, a human pig viral mutant, was discovered on an industrial pig production operation in Newton Grove, North Carolina. The virus mutated further and then spread within months throughout the United States. We then exported it to Asia, and then the favor was apparently returned. After reshuffling with the classic swine flu virus, our Made in the USA triple reassortment virus picked up two gene segments from a Eurasian swine flu strain to create the flu pandemic of 2009. The main ancestor of the pandemic flu virus, shown in orange, is the triple hybrid mutant that emerged and spread throughout so-called factory farms. So after eight decades of stability, what happened in the 1990s that led to these unprecedented changes in swine flu? Now in poultry, outbreaks of highly pathogenic uh, highly disease-causing avian influenza in the first few years of the century has already exceeded the total number of outbreaks recorded for the entire previous century. As one leading flu expert told science, we've gone from a few snowflakes to an avalanche. What's been happening in recent years to trigger this kind of evolution and fast-forward for both the swine and chicken flu viruses? Well. One can ask the world's leading expert, Dr. Robert Webster. He says, now we have millions of chickens in chicken factories next to uh, pig factories. And this virus has the opportunity to get into one of these chicken factories and make billions and billions of mutations um, uh, uh, continuously. So what we've changed is the way we raise animals. Six years ago, the world's three leading authorities got together for a joint consultation. The World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and the World Organization for Animal Health, the world's leading veterinary authority. 
Their job was to uncover the key underlying causes of these emerging animal to human diseases. Number one on their list of themes of risk factors was the increasing demand for animal protein the world over. The United Nations has urged that all governments, local authorities, and national agencies need to take a, a greatly increased role in combating the role of factory farming, which provides ideal conditions for the flu virus to spread and mutate into a more dangerous form. More than five years ago, the American Public Health Association, the largest association of public health professionals in the world, called for a moratorium on uh, these confined animal feeding operations, these factory farms. In 2007, the Journal of the APHA, the American Public Health Association, published an editorial that went beyond just calling for a de-intensification of animal agriculture, the pork and poultry industries. It's curious, the editorial goes, that changing the way humans treat animals, most basically ceasing to eat them, or at the very least radically limiting the quantity of them that is eaten, is largely off the radar as a significant preventive measure. Such a change, however, if sufficiently adopted or imposed, could still reduce the risk of the much feared influenza epidemic. Humanity does not even consider this option. The editorial concludes those who consume animals uh, can not only harm those animals and endanger themselves, but may threaten the well-being of future generations. It's uh, time for humans to remove their heads from the sand and recognize the risk to themselves that can arise from their maltreatment of other species. Now, how we treat animals can have these global public health implications. In this age of emerging diseases, right, there are now billions of feathered and curly-tailed test tubes for viruses to incubate and mutate within billions more spins at pandemic roulette. But along with human culpability comes hope. If changes in human behavior can cause new plagues, well then, Changes in human behavior may prevent them in the future. Thank you.